March. Um, so I, I really like to you guys to mention something that you're really proud of, like one achievement or in in or more, you know, but but certainly one achievement that you're particularly proud of as a leader. So <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing a lot of talking. I've been hot mic. So uh, really, it's it's ultimately uh, coming up with something which will make a difference in people's lives. Uh, I've done multiple companies, but this particular company I'm extremely proud of um, because what we are doing is we've, we've come up, as Andrew had said earlier, we've come up with a point of care system. When you go to places like India and China and Africa, and the and, uh, rest of the world, about 80% of the world's population has no health care. 70 to 80% of the world's population has no health care. And we don't realize that. We are living in a very blessed society. We've got everything at our disposal. When we talk to people out here, they say, oh, this is not required. But when you go to Africa, you find people dying you go to China, you go to India, you go to these villages, tier three, tier four cities, people are dying. And so you've got to come up with, the way I look at it, my mission in life is to come up with something which can make a difference in their lives. Come up with healthcare, with weak, uh, diagnostic systems, treatments at low cost that these people can access. They've got to travel distances from their villages to the cities. And which means they have to be away from their family they, to get their treatment. They have to stop working. And how are they going to take care of their family at that time, right? And so we need to bring health care to these people, not have them come to health care come to the cities. And that's what we started doing. And th this technology which we are developing came out of Lawrence Livermore National Labs and Sandia National Labs and UC Irvine. We combined these technologies together. And there's a lot of work going on in universities uh, and people like you who are doing work like this. That uh, they're, they're kids that I know who are working on diagnostic uh, tests for cardiac and infectious diseases, and they're about 15, 16, you know, 14. And in high school, there's a kid that I know who's developed a test on, uh, on paper, which is literally no cost. And that's, that's a, they're, they're taking it into these communities, into, into Tanzania, into villages. They're taking it into Ghana. They're taking it into the villages of Rwanda and China and India, et cetera, to make a difference. And so I think each one, like Andrew said, we can get involved. Each one of us can get involved. Um, you know, I got my, my son who was in high school a few years back. He didn't know what he wanted to do. He was taking part and one day I caught him and I told him, get out of the house. and. You know, and then I decided this is not going to work, so we're going to do something about it. And so I needed help with creating a video for what we were trying to do. So I asked him if he could help me, and he got so excited, he started a video company, and he's helping, he's now in college, he's a second, uh, uh, third year college student, and he started working with entrepreneurs to help create videos to tell their story. So there's, there's all sorts of opportunities which all of you can uh, get involved with at this time. The world needs people like you. And you know, there, there's fresh ideas which you guys have, which we guys may be going along a certain path. You guys have got fantastic technology today which can make a difference. And you're, you're far more savvy with technology than people from our generation, and you can make a difference today. 
That's a really good point. I think that when Jeff, uh, Sanjeev said and Andrew uh, echoed that point, uh, and it's, you know, really, if you don't know how to start, it's okay. Go to your parents. Go to your dad or your mom. Because those are the people who want you to see, to see the most, imme most immediately. So it's okay, you know, and ask them for some advice. And, and then just like in Sanjeev's son's case, you know, start off entrepreneurship and, and all of that. So, so that's, that would be important. I, I just want to say, I think it's harder to be your age now than it was when I was your age. Um, and I, I think technology is very much a double-edged sword where I get the sense that for people your age, you're like constantly uh, accessible, constantly overstimulated. Like you're also much more academically stressed out um, than someone like uh, like than I was because uh, just your school, like the schoolwork is much, much heavier. You probably feel very, very heavily scheduled. Um, and uh, I know that that's a culture of this region too. And so then if someone's like, hey, like, you know, do something extra, be an entrepreneur, it's like, man, I, like, I, I can barely freaking, like, keep my, you know, like, schoolwork straight and, like, not lose my mind. Um, so all, all of that is cool in the sense that, like, that, that's the sense I get from young people today is that, that we're, like, putting you in ridiculous uh, pressures and, and situations. And so I certainly don't want to add to that in terms of being like, hey, you can do more, you can do more. Um, the, the, I, I will say that there's going to come a point in your life, hopefully, that you find something that you want to do that's intrinsic, that is not because it's going to help you uh, get ahead. And that I, I know it's true with Sanjeev, I know it's true with David, I know it's true for me, is that that's when uh, you're going to end up doing something entrepreneurial. Uh, and the main way to do something entrepreneurial is just to find something you care about that makes a difference to you that is intrinsic. That is not because it's going to look good in your college app. It's not going to make you look cooler for, you know, the opposite sex or, you know, same sex or whomever. Um, but it's just something that you want to do and you just need to see happen uh, regardless. And I know Chuck did the same thing with uh, starting the alumni organization and whatnot. Like, you know, just wanted to make it happen. You want to see it in the world. So I know right now this might seem a bridge too far, but, like, you will grow into it. Right. David, you want to share? <coughs> yeah. So medical. So one part of our organization, we we find villages or places in China, Laos, or Myanmar, or Thailand <coughs> that need medical help. That was a big part of our organization. We've cured, we've treated about a thousand people who were blind, and they wow. became they, they can see now. Wow, it's <coughs> awesome. About a thousand. Restored sight. We restored sight for a thousand people, wow. and it was wow. We call it miracle workers, right? <laughs> When we first started, actually, we visited a village. We went to a house, and we wanted to see what the family needed. And we found out that the kid couldn't see. And we didn't know why, and the parents didn't know why. They didn't have the money to go to the hospital to get a diagnosis or any, any of that. So we, we were like, OK. So we brought a doctor from the city. It was a four-hour trip on dirt roads in like four by fours. We were like going like crazy routes. I thought I was going to die halfway through, but we got there. <coughs> and we found out that it was such a simple problem that like a thousand bucks would solve the problem. Wow. It was like literally a thousand bucks. So we brought the kid, next day we flew the kid out to the, the city into a hospital and we diagnosed him. They went under surgery the day after. And two days later, they opened their eyes. I, I got the pleasure to open up oh. the, um, the bandages and the kid just started crying. He was like, the world is beautiful. No. <laughs> wow. yeah, give, give him one applause. So, so that really touched me. That I thought I was doing things that like people were benefiting, but I didn't realize how much of an impact I was making. I was what seventeen at the time, I think. And wow, seventeen, which is you guys here, right? Give him a round of applause. Thanks. So, then, then the next thought was, how many people are similar? How many people can we cure with just a couple hundred dollars? And then we found out that if we Economies of scale, we add more people together, it would just be 150 US dollars and we no. can cure set of eyes. That's insane. I was like, no. So we came back, we fundraised, we did a lot of things. The next year we went back and we found 200 people who needed their eyes cured and we, we did that. And year after year, we've wow. been doing this ever since. So all it took was one case and you, kn you don't realize until it actually happens. And that's what, I guess that really touched me the most. Yes, Thank you. Really. Yeah, David, that's awesome. <coughs> I just want to follow up on something Sanjeev said because it's a conversation I had uh, literally this past week. So the conversation I had a while ago with my wife was this. Who, who's cooler, Chinese or Indian? <laughs> um, 
And so then we sat there and thought about it. And we're like, well, I can think of like a bunch of name brand Indian CEOs. I can think of uh, the head of Google, the head of uh, Microsoft, the head of Pepsi. Like there are all these like, like incredible Indian CEOs. And I tried to do the same thing with Chinese. And frankly, it was a bit harder. And so I had a conversation with this Chinese American CEO this week. And he said that he is an engineering company, just has like Chinese and Indian engineers working for him. And then he said, I had to sit there and like, it was the Indian uh, engineer that I gave the big promotion to. And the Chinese engineers were very mad. And then, and he said, and the reason I did this, and this was just him, he was like, is that the Chinese engineers did not listen and the Indian engineer did. And if you're going to need the lead and uh, become a manager, you need to listen. And he said that he thinks like that actually is the key difference between why there are these Indian CEOs, these major companies, um, and fewer Chinese. So I just wanted to share that because I literally had that conversation this week, uh, and it was re relevant to what Sanjeev. So, <laughs> I I, th I think it's not about uh, you know uh, it's not really about Indians or Chinese. At the end of the day, um, as I look at it, and I talk to my kids as well, we are immigrants. And all of us are immigrants here. Um, I think the first generation which comes in here of immigrants are have nothing. They've left everything behind. And they have nothing to fall back on. They have no bridge to cross back. And you have to make it happen, right? And that's what, whether it's Chinese, whether it's Indians, whether they are Latinos, doesn't matter who, the first generation takes that extra effort to make it happen, right? And I think, and I see that with my kids as well, they're a lot more lax comparatively, but they, each one of us finds a purpose in our own lives, and you will find that purpose in your own life. It's not going to happen because I said it, or your your dad or mom said it, or Chuck or Andrew or your uncle say it. It's going to happen one day. And that day is going to be the turning point in your life. And you're going to, you guys will rise way above anyone may have imagined. Because you just need to find that purpose. For me, it was when uh, this friend of mine at Amgen, so I talked about one friend who had cancer and he had the drug given to him. Now the guy who dr developed the drug was a Chinese American, Philip Shea. He developed the drug and he was in, he ended up with leukemia and he ended up getting the same drug which he developed. And you know, these two stories are the key for my turning point in my life. Had that not happened, I don't know what I would be doing. I, I may still be, I was looking at Wall Street and I was saying, hey, I want to be like these guys on Wall Street, right? Making tons of money. Then it was not about money after that. It was about making a difference. So it's, you know, it, it was my Chinese friend, uh, Phil, who developed this drug. It was Ernie Gruen, who was a white American, and they really made the difference in my life, ultimately, about how I changed. Right, meaning that everybody could affect, make positive impact yes. uh, together. Yes. And, and so, you know, and, and whether it's Chinese or, or Indian. But in any case, uh, 